got LeBron James in a battle. There he is. I don't know what happened. Somehow we managed to get the same stream back, and a good amount of people stuck with us, so I thank you. <laughs> Something happened. We played it, and the whole thing shut down. Everything shut down. Um, bodies exploded. Heads blew off. <laughs> you know? Um, why, uh, while I try to bring up some of these links, why don't you let everybody know where you are uh, right now? Uh, yeah. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, right? I can actually see the golden Trump Towers, the sunset here from my room. Um, and, well, I... <laughs> okay. Colorado was the first place I stopped, right, as I'm driving back home to California. And... It was actually it was actually bearable. It wasn't that bad. The mask signs were up everywhere, but they weren't enforcing it. Then I got to Utah, where the mask signs were everywhere, and they were enforcing it. It was very strange. <laughs> um, and then I get here to Las Vegas, Nevada, the last stop before uh, I make make you know the the last short leg of the trip into California tomorrow morning. But um. It, it's really quite strange, man, because like I said, the first thing you notice when you go into one of these casinos, that everybody's in there smoking cigarettes. It smells like cigarettes down there. <laughs> um, but uh, but they are really strict. About, I mean, I was, look, I paid for this room. I, I didn't want any trouble. So I thought if I just put the submission necklace on, they weren't going to really press it. Like if I just, you know, kind of dangle it below my, my mouth. They weren't going to really trip, but they were. The lady was screaming at me from across the room because it dropped below my nose. But if I if I put it in that same position and light up a cigarette, then there's no problem. So it just doesn't make sense. But you might I, say I'm, it is I'm what actually, it is. Well, I'm actually nervous because I'm hearing that California is going to be worse. And I, I don't know what to make of it, man. It's it's just. It's beyond repair at this point. Like, even Fauci, you know, you feel like, of course, he never would do this because he enjoys the power. But he could come on TV to no tomorrow, tonight, and say, all right, the air is safe to breathe, guys. Uh, false alarm. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. But people are already, they're dug in too deep that they won't even. And you, and you, look, bro, if you actually read some of these mandates, you watch some of these videos that are going on in New York, where they actually carry the, there's one clip, I don't want to say it went viral, but had a couple, I don't know, maybe 50,000 views or something, whatever. Wow, what like a local, guy. A, a local Brooklyn guy who was carrying around the mandate with him, highlighting the part where it says, you can say you have a medical exemption and they can't ask you what the medical exemption is. And and they still give him a hard time. But the, the point I'm trying to make is, nobody's actually looking into this stuff right they're just like somebody on tv says you got to wear a mask then they do it and then they say you got to wear two and then they wear two but if, even if you look at the the two mask the the two mask um theory they even say at least from what i saw is that you're not supposed to double up on surgical masks you're supposed to wear a cloth mask on top of a surgical mask but you go downstairs in this hotel that i'm at right now and you will see the people the dealers, the people at, behind the tables at the table games wearing two blue surgical masks, and it's insanity. It's actually incredibly intelligent, Eric, and I'm upset that you would think anything otherwise. I'm reading things that people, that companies in Texas are going to try to still mandate masks for for uh, their customers. I don't know what it's like down there, but you can't just force people to wear, like you can't force people to wear things that aren't... Uh, like you can't force people to cover up your face. It's not illegal to have an uncovered face. You can't just make up your own laws. It doesn't do like that. You can't be like, I can only serve you if you're wearing like a clown suit. Yeah. You might as well at this <laughs> point, but you can't you can't mandate uh, stuff like that unless it's like a paid a club. That's why Costco thinks they can do it. They still can't do the stuff they're doing, but you can you can have more rules if it's a an agreed upon thing beforehand. But I don't know, man. It's it's gotten to peak stupidity, and I think it's what did you see that map that's floating around of all the places with uh without mask mandates? I think it's up to a third of the states. I'm gonna try to look that up. I did see that, um, but it's just guys like uh, and this is the example I use, right? And then we'll we'll jump into these stories that you know LeBron stuff, but this is why I said in my family because they are still 
victim of this fake news nonsense. But my theory is, it's very simple, is if you knew, if you talked to somebody that just tested positive and we can, we can discuss the, the validity of these tests in a different conversation. But if you speak to someone that just, that just tested positive, say this morning or yesterday, are you gonna go hang out with them? Are you gonna go grab lunch with them? If you guys both wear masks, <laughs> not, not, okay, not even lunch. Are you gonna go walk through the park with them if you guys both wear masks? If the answer is no, then that means that you know in your head that the masks don't do anything, right? Because you know that you could still get the virus even if you both wear masks. And then you're, the logic completely broken down, right? It's the same thing, not to be crass, but if you know that somebody has maybe some sort of STD, are you gonna still hook up with that person and say, well, well it's okay, who cares if they have AIDS? We're gonna use a condom and it's gonna be okay. Because you still know that that is not, that's not a fail safe. It's not gonna work 100% of the time. So maybe that- maybe The that, old maybe, AIDS theory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Often Maybe used in politics. <laughs> no, I'm just making fun. But but you, it's you a see false what I'm sense saying, of security. Right? It, it doesn't make sense, bro. It just doesn't. It doesn't add up. But here we are. I guess it, it's incredibly frustrating, and I actually am sort of nervous to see what California has to offer. And by the way, last thing about Vegas, or maybe we can come back to it later, is that it almost kind of, bro, it almost kind of looks like San Francisco out there. There's a lot of junkies out there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, uh, fentanyl lean, heroin lean, these guys that are like zombied out, like all up and down the strip. And I saw a naloxone billboard. This, this is not, this is not good, bro. I, this makes me appreciate South Dakota a lot more, actually, to be honest with you. You'd have to hope the mob can clean up the hoboes. But I went there like four or five years ago, I think, and I, and it was quite clean. All the scummy people were down at that little like boardwalk with the outdoor uh, merchants and they had uh, the restaurant where they have a scale outside and if you're over 300 pounds you eat for free at the buffet which is pretty impressive uh, you might come across that I'm getting out of here express, as soon as I wake up what was the expressed reason are you just going on your way to California back home is that it uh yeah basically I haven't been home um since 2019 um and I just I just want to go back while I still have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of time before I have to like <laughs> buckle down and, and figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. But, um, it's fair. and I, I do have a, like, uh, I'm, I got a couple of friends. I might, might be a little bit of, might be a little bit of content coming out of Southern California. Um, we're, we're going to try to make it, Try to make it worth the trip because now that I'm almost done with the drive, the first leg, the first day was the longest. Um, tomorrow's will be the shortest, but then I got to do it all over again. So um, it should be fun. We're going to make it worth it and definitely tuned in for what we're, we're going to have some some fun stuff coming out of the southern portion of California. You better. Yeah. You better. All right. The first story I wanted to get to, um, you're on the road, so I picked – the dumbest stories I could. Dumb in a, in a hilarious way, you guys. The first story is um, out of Washington, your favorite place. And it goes like this, everybody. The Washington football team, reminder that this is their name because Redskins is offensive to nobody but people on Twitter. Um, they've announced that the NFL's longest-running cheerleading squad, which is apparently them, will be replaced with a co-ed dance squad. The disbanding of the First Ladies of Football, very clever name, which debuted in 1962 as the Redskinettes, is the latest move by the team to modernize, the Washington Post reported. The move comes a month after the team halted its all-female program after a confidential statement with former cheerleaders were subject to several lewd videos, the newspaper reported. So um, somebody showed them videos, I guess, and now we got to go. The answer is less men, I guess. Will this stop? If men are there, is this going to stop lewd videos from being shown to them? The Washington Redskins owner is really weird, I, rem I must remind you. Why else would uh, they change the name when absolutely nobody wanted it? Because there's been studies, and you can watch Ben Shapiro uh, talk about this, like in 2017, that natives don't care. Because if you're not making fun of an ethnic group and you're making them look cool, they tend not to care about it. Same thing with the Edmonton Espos in Canada. I talked to, uh, who did I talk to about this? Somebody I interviewed the other day. Um, 
overwhelmingly they supported. In fact, the football team in Canada, their name was created in tandem with the the tribe that they were representing. And they have regular relationship with them. Like the team will go and help them out and do like uh, events with them. But they still canceled it because the stadium sponsor wanted to change the name. So now they're the Edmonton football team, and they have to come up with another <laughs> name that starts with E instead of Eskimos because they, oh, I guess they can't afford to rebrand everything because it's the Canadian Football League, and it's been a long time since anybody was paid top dollar in the Canadian Football League, let me tell you. <laughs> okay. So, first of all, though, <laughs> why? Okay. Obviously, the Redskins, I mean, they clearly, this is like, this is a double whammy, right? So they had to change the name whenever that happened. I, I'm Perhaps I'm out of the loop. Was that a year, a couple of years ago? That was last season. Yeah, last year. That was that was last season. That was stupid. And, oh, man, how do I put this nicely? At the risk of sounding very completely insensitive, the little bit of time I have spent in Sioux Falls, where you do see a lot of natives, um, I, I their skin tone is really quite red. Okay, just wow, we're cutting that from everything right now. <laughs> Maybe where you are. <laughs> Maybe where you are, they are, but they aren't here. I was talking about it with Vince Dow, who's a who's a TikTok star and viral uh, Instagrammer, um, and he got in trouble. He's an Asian guy. I think he's Vietnamese, and. He got in trouble, quote unquote, because he st said that uh, they shouldn't be changing all these names. And then when people were just like, oh, it's because it's racist, he started pointing out, and I'll try to bring this up, that um, there's so many college football teams and other sp and co college teams named after like white people. There's the Boston Celtics, first of all. There's like the Tennessee Volunteers, the Minnesota Vikings. I'll find his, t his TikTok uh, for you, but it's... I didn't realize that there's actually just like hundreds and upon hundreds of friggin' names that are named after white people. And of course nobody cares as they shouldn't, but like the double standard is absurd here. I found his video. Well, okay. Um, but that, that really wasn't the point I was trying to make. I just, I just, I, I just genuinely noticed it. Like when I, I'm driving around the street and look at, again, at the risk of sounding insensitive, when you see some people, like it, it's like a notice it's like a noticeable skin tone right like but that's that's not the point i'm trying to make here the point i'm trying to make here is that why do they have this double whammy so they change the name and then they have to get the men on the cheerleading squad and this is very similar to what you see with the uh the food the the food mascots right and i'm sure you you've probably seen that that other viral clip of the guy talking about all the white people who are on food that have not yet been canceled, like the Quaker Oats guy, and um, <laughs> there's a couple other there's a couple other white food mascots that still have you know still quote unquote have their job, so that's not racist, and they can continue to be the face of these products, but Uncle Ben, uh, Uncle Ben, and um, Aunt Jemima, you know the Linda Lakes lady, Goya, all that stuff. yeah, yeah. So why, why is and and. I mean, that's a good, good point that you bring up is that I don't know all, you know, there's whatever, a million football mascots, but wh why are the ones named after white people not deemed racist? I went to a place that, that the mascot was the Don. What is that? What's the origin of the Don? I don't know. Here's some of the stuff um, <laughs> that they were alleging from the uh, cheerleaders. Only one of them gave their name, um, so she's probably paid to, sorry to tell you. Um, she was requested to wear a tight dress for a meeting with clients so the men in the room would have something to look at. Another example, Applegate said a sweet holder grabbed her friend's backside during a game. The woman complained the team's top sales executive was indifferent. So basically, dudes are being assholes. Therefore, having like a 50-50 gendered dance squad... Is gonna is gonna fix this somehow. This is what happens in every one of these instances, whether it's about race or sexism. Um, they panic, of course, bad publicity, and then they're just like, "What do we do? We just let's hire like an equity officer or a, a somebody who gets paid to speak about this." And they give them a list of ideas and a suggestion of what they can throw money at. And I guess this person said, "Hey, I 
to somebody else, hey, I bet you I can get the Washington Redskins to have a uh, half male, half friggin' whatever uh, dance squad, and but, then we'll get them to do it. If 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 you guys agree to this, then we'll stop like pu- publishing stuff about you or something like that. There's always some an exchange of money in the NFL social justice thing. There was a hundred billion dollars or a hundred million dollars transferred in the uh, NBA. There's all these. Uh, they give money to all these players, different social justice initiatives. Money always is somehow the thing that gets thrown at it. And it's only going to be a matter of time before we find out why uh, a dance squad is what solves this. But don't you, don't you realize that a, they're never going to be happy. No matter how much money you throw at them, that's the problem. The the goalposts are just going to move just like the protesters in New York defund the police a billion dollars. De Blasio does it. And then they say, "Mm, that's not enough. And then secondly, don't we realize that it's always going to backfire, right? I mean, the NBA loses the, you know, plummets in the ratings when they put the the BLM on the court and the social justice slogans on the back of the jerseys. I mean, you can watch the ratings plummet, right? I mean, <laughs> what wouldn't you think? Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I could be completely wrong about this, but when everybody's locked up, you know, at home staying safe, wouldn't that be the time where your ratings would skyrocket because people are at you would hope so. watching television? It has for the UFC because they're not stupid. The UFC continues to break records and records. And I imagine it probably does for soccer as well. They've faced racism a lot in their history in the European soccer leagues. Uh, monkey chants, throwing bananas on the field, uh, anti-Jew stuff. Any any Yugoslavian teams playing each other, hate their fans hate each other. Brazilian teams hate each other. So they dealt with that for a long time. But the UFC specifically broke tons of records last year for social media reach, for pay-per-views, all this stuff. Because who else are you going to watch? All they do in the UFC is they let them punch each other in the face. And if they want to say something, they only have before the mat- or before the fight, after the fight, if they win, and in press conferences. And if you don't like what they have to say, there's like hundreds of other fighters you can watch. So there's no policing. And I did an interview with a guy named Vlad who works for the UFC. Uh, you can see that on my channel. Uh, he's one of the Russian translators. He knows like Khabib and all these uh, high-level uh, Russian athletes. And he says it's completely opposite where they are, where in most places you go into work and if you talk about Trump or something, uh, everybody's going to look at you weird. He says there in the UFC, if you start going all social justice on people, everybody's going to stop. Everybody's going to be looking at you weird. And it's very uh, MMA as it as a whole is not does not do well with like hypersensitive bullshit. And it's I think it's very obviously why. Well, I you know I can't I don't I think a lot of that stuff is on like pay per view. I, I don't I've never really been into UFC MMA stuff uh, mostly because look. I, you know, you see these clips, these guys, you know, bones coming out and there's blood everywhere. That's that's <laughs> not really for me. That's you know, that's not that's not my speed. But you know, no. I, I could appreciate their uh, I could appreciate them standing their ground, right? But before we move off the topic of sports, really quick, uh, do you heard about this story uh, with Jeremy Lin? Yes, I did. Um, him basically accusing other players of making fun of him for being Asian. Yes. Now, it's funny, though, because, A, he used to be in the NBA. Now he's in the G League, right? Of so course. remember Lynn Sanity? Whatever, five, six, seven <laughs> years ago, whatever it was, it was Lynn Sanity, and everybody was all about Jeremy Lynn. He was so good. But somehow he's taken a fall from grace. He's not even in the league anymore. He's in the, the what used to be called the Development League, and then they changed yeah. it to the G League, right, because they had the Gatorade sponsor. But he wouldn't. he wouldn't say – when it happened, and he wouldn't say who said it. Now, you that is already suspect. First of all, he's a grown man, and it shouldn't matter if somebody called him a name. It literally shouldn't exactly. matter. Exactly, especially in sports. Exactly, right? It's, a, it's like par for the course, right? I mean, you should hear some of the things we used to say on the golf course when I was a kid, like, you know, <laughs> young, like being young and, like, making fun of people on a golf course. And that's low, you know, that's that's not, you know – it's nothing like trash talking in, in the NBA or in a more like high high intensity sport. But so even if you take the theory that somebody was mean to him and that's wrong, just if you want to go with that, like you shouldn't be name calling on the basketball court. Even if you can believe that, why wouldn't he say when and where it happened if it was so if it was so hurtful and 
he wanted to really put an end to it? Or is it more likely that he's just riding the wave of, you know, air quote, anti-Asian racism that's happening in the area where he just happens to be playing? I feel like the most likely scenario is people say stuff to him and he's a big wuss. <laughs> and he sees, and you're right, he sees this stuff happening, um, people getting, you know, praised. It, it shouldn't be something, what, a guy, he's probably like 33 or 34 at this point. Um, I'll bring up the article here. 32. I felt, so he's 32. I felt like I wanted to bring awareness towards, not me, but to what's going on off the court, real life, with people dealing with the actual physical attacks. So he's compl he's saying words are violence, essentially. He's saying... Uh, it's not me. It's not me we're talking about. It's people who are facing actual violence. So then, why why are you talking? We are tired of being told what we don't experience race that we don't experience racism. Asian Americans. Who we're is tired of being told to keep our exactly. Nobody says that. Nobody likes racist people. I want to be better for my elders who work so hard and sacrifice so much to make a life. He wasn't talking about this when he was on the New York Knicks, Eric, um, no. or the Houston Rockets. And let me tell you, I was the white guy on a basketball team. <laughs> For a few years, I would also play basketball in college. And one hilarious line somebody said when w people were choosing teams one time, uh, somebody chooses me because he'd see me play and I'm not terrible. I'll, I'll go that far. He Somebody uh, chooses me and the guy next to him, he's like, bro, do you want to lose? <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just started laughing because it was so true. Uh, 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 like I, I understood where he's coming from, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm better than like the Indian and European guys, not better than the the huge black guys. So, um, that's that's where I that's where I fit in. But we weren't actually done with um, with uh, with basketball because a soccer player who's a super famous soccer player in Europe, his name is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He's a um. A uh, Serbian Bosnian guy who is born, he's from Sweden, but his parents escaped communist Yugoslavia. Two different communist nations uh, in Yugoslavia. They went to Sweden and had a kid. Um, he's been saying that athletes should do what they're good at, and that's play sports. Do what you're good at, he says, and stay out of politics. Athletes unite the world, politics divide it. Our role is to unite the world by doing what we do. Best athletes should be athletes and politicians should do politics. And he specifically mentioned LeBron James because LeBron James is so social justice -y. And we all know LeBron James has got the worst opinions. And he's saying all this stuff about how there's all this inequality. But uh, China, super sweet. China, slave labor makes my shoes. And, I, and buy Nike if you want, but just don't tell me that you're for equality and you're for everything. But, you, but if you were to speak out against China... You would lose all your money, so you don't do that. Do what you're good at. Do the category you do, he said. I play football because I'm the best at playing football. I don't do politics. If I would have been a political politician, I would do politics. This is the first big mistake people do when they become famous. They become good in a they become a certain status. Stay out of it. Just do what you do best because it doesn't look good. I mean, to its a degree, I disagree to be able to say what you want, but at the other hand, he's right. Politics are always going to divide things probably around 50-50. Michael Jordan famously said Republicans buy sneakers too. Why would you want to Why would you want to split your fan base in half? You know who's the best at this is Matthew McConaughey. He has a way as he's clearly conservative. He's from Texas. He goes on Fox News, but he won't just be out, "Oh, hey, everybody who I disagree with sucks" because they you want them to see your movie. Don't you want them to come watch you, LeBron? Don't you want them to think, like, maybe he's got a point instead of just being like, Trump sucks, anybody who who's uh, who voted for him sucks, um, everything's racist, uh, people spray painted racist things on my garage, but nobody can find out who did it. Um, all this stuff. And then LeBron actually spoke back about him. Uh, let me, and then and here's what he said. I preach about my people. I preach about equality, social injustice, racism, systemic voter suppression. That's things that go on our, in our community. When I'm, number one, LeBron, um, you don't speak about China on purpose. Like literally on purpose, you have shown that you won't speak about China. What systematic voter suppression? And I bet, I guarantee you, Eric, his version of voter suppression is voter ID. That's what it always is somehow. 
and nobody outside of the United States understands how needing an ID to vote is suppression or racist or anything. It's basically saying that minorities, specifically black people in LeBron's case, he's basically saying that if that's what it is, I'll look it up in a second, uh, that you don't know how to get an ID, as that famous video suggests. Yeah, uh, that was the art. Was that Ari Hor? Um, uh, Ami Horovitz. Ami, Ami, yeah. Um, so yeah, but this is first of all, LeBron. When LeBron, okay, he's not he's not talking politics. He is regurgitating the talking points. Just how how you say that he 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 specifically doesn't talk about China because he is told not to talk about China which is the the exact inverse of this right he is told to talk about this lebron doesn't doesn't know about systemic voter suppression which isn't even really a thing from a ham sandwich somebody is telling him <laughs> to say that right it might be the same guys at nike it might be the guys at the nba it might be a little bit of both it might be somebody out in hollywood where he's looking to you know turn his career into you know he's getting he's getting pretty old for an nba player so He's looking to weasel his way into Hollywood because for whatever reason, he just doesn't have enough money. So it's obviously not real. It's not even it's not even political speech. It's just him parroting the talking points that he's been given. And it, it's absolutely disgusting because I don't know exactly where I saw it. I think it was um, it was one of these like SJW um, Instagram accounts, you know, where they do they put the clapping emojis and stuff like that um, that said. LeBron does his research and he claps back or something. But to anybody who's even been paying a tiny bit of attention, we can all know that LeBron does not do any research. He doesn't, if a man who's worth a billion dollars wants to vote for Joe Biden so he can pay 70%, okay, maybe 70% is a little bit extreme, but it, it doesn't make sense. It's obvious that somebody that, that there's another deal going on. He doesn't know anything about these policies. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about... Sy sy I'm looking at the article right here. Systematic voter suppression, right? These are all... Typically, typically what the left does is they use euphemisms, right? This is the opposite of a euphemism. But it's all in the, like, the way they manipulate language, right? So now they're pushing this Equality Act because equality sounds great. But when you look into it, it's full of poison pills. And the same thing, just on the opposite side of the coin, is systematic voter suppression, right? That means, oh, you have to have an ID. Oh, you have to stand in line for a little bit. Like, they just use, they, they manipulate the words to either scare people into believing one thing or trick you into believing something that is obviously going to benefit perhaps their pockets, you know, their, their complete control of everything. It's all manipulation. And of course, the media is hugely responsible in this because if, if the guys over at CNN or MSNBC or anything were to even look at this with, I mean, they've finally been forced to look at stuff a little bit truthfully with this whole Cuomo stuff. But if they were to, to even examine this, even a quarter, of the, a quarter of the way that they should, then this would open a lot of people's minds. But even as me and you talk about it, if, the, if we contradict the people on TV, it's sad to say that there are still people out there who believe them. And for better or for worse, like some of them are in my family and you just, there's no getting through to them because somebody inside the television knows better than them. It's, it's mind boggling. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to, I want to show my predictive powers here and my genius um, to everybody <laughs> watching. Cause I literally just Googled this. You have to take my word for it. That I just open the other tab well, he's on full screen, and I Google this. Here you go, everybody. Uh, you can tell me I'm great after. The groups, okay, this is more than a vote. A group launched by LeBron James said Tuesday that it was partnering with the NBA, the NBA Players Association, state chapters of the NAACP, which is yeah. National African American something, um, to attempt to... Advancement of colored people. Uh, not racist some... at all. To, <laughs> to draw attention to attempts in Georgia and other battleground states battleground states to roll back voting rights. The groups intend to use the attention surrounding the All-Star game Sunday in Atlanta. Uh, when was this printed? Uh, March 2nd. So I'm two uh, I'm, I'm a genius. Okay. Um, the groups <laughs> intend to be using the All-Star game, which will be played Sunday in Atlanta, amplify concerns about um, proposals that would make it harder for black people to vote in future elections. Georgia legislators are considering Republican-backed measures to require more ID for absentee ballots, limit weekend early voting days, and curb the use of ballot drop boxes. How 
is any of that racist? Requiring ID. Black people, Hispanic people, anyone who's not in a way, they know how to get ID. I'm sorry to tell you guys, Democrats. I'm sorry to tell you, LeBron. They know how to get ID. Absentee ballots. Okay, so where you, where you don't have to be there, you need <laughs> I you're going to they want you to have ID when you sign up for an absentee ballot. Limit weekend early voting days. I don't know uh, why we want to stop that necessarily, but it doesn't sound racist to me to say you can't vote on uh, weekends. Curb the use of ballot drop boxes. That's a pretty obvious one. So people can't manipulate them. People can't stuff them. People can't take them like we saw in the last election. Quote, unquote, alleged didn't really happen. Biden's the greatest president of all time. <laughs> that people backdate uh, absentee ballots and they mysteriously lose Dropbox ballots. Eliminate no excuse mail in voting. So I don't understand how this is targeted at black people. And the number one thing, of course, as I predicted, would be ID because this is what happens. They, Like you said, they use these magical words that are supposed to mean different things. And it actually just means uh, something completely different. Paris Climate Accord. Oh, that's the thing where I just want to, you know, come together with other countries and uh, reduce our emissions. Not what it is. Of what course. what other ones? <laughs> North I mean, America Free Trade Agreement. To, not what it is. Look, it all boils down to don't question us. That's what they all boil down to. Don't they? Okay, they say we need to. We need unity. We need to unite. That means don't question it. You know, like it. <laughs> It all, whether they're coming from, like I said, where they're making things sound much better than they are, or they're making things sound much worse than they are, it's all going towards the same goal of do not question it. You see what happened to uh, our, our friends over at Right Side Broadcasting. I mean, they get they get banned for two weeks or suspended for two weeks from YouTube because they had the audacity to air President Trump's C CPAC speech, which for the record, in my opinion, wasn't that fiery. It gave me a little no, bit of hope. I agree. Like it was, it was good to like hear. You know, he was up there for what an hour and a half or something, however long it was, and it, it was, it was a step in the right direction. But unfortunately, right now, it doesn't seem like there's any hope. Especially when you hear stories like this. They're gonna if it, look, it all boils down to like if you ain't black, basically, right? Like if you don't vote for the Democrats, then you're not black. If you don't vote for the Democrats, then you're a racist. They all point to the same exact thing. And how dare the, the good folks over at Right Side Broadcasting air the speech. And of course, the the big tech, you know, oligarchs or whatever, they manipulate the rules every, every quarter to make sure that y you can't say whatever it is you want to say, right? I mean, what, a year or two ago, there was no rule about, um, election integrity but now that they've literally cheated i mean not cheated at all a one fair and square a time magazine article right. came out uh discussing the fortification but it all depends on who says it right i mean if mm -hmm. if time magazine says yeah well if we didn't cheat it was fortified by you know it's it's absolutely mind boggling mind blowing whatever and I just, I just don't see a way out of it. And again, for the record, Trump's speech was pretty tepid. So if that's the line, then we are in for a world of hurt. And just on a completely different note, I absolutely despise his little, his little segment about the vaccine where he kind of like throws it in there. Like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. like they didn't think I could, I could get it done, but I got it done. And Joe Biden even got one and he didn't remember. That's how painless the shot was and everybody should go get one. And I'm like, no, dude, no, I, I, I don't think I will. And, but, but that's okay. There's another bit of like cognitive dissonance, right? Like, so you guys all told us that we were going to die from the virus. Trump said maybe HCQ would work. And then they said, that's going to kill you even faster than the virus. <laughs> and then, and then Trump said, okay, we're going to get a vaccine. And they said, well, if Trump's doing the vaccine, then it's bad. But now that Trump's gone and Joe Biden is heading up the vaccine, it's good again. And none of this makes mm -hmm. any sense. And also they said that the vaccine, he came in, I came in and nothing was done. There is no, there's no vaccine when I came in. It's, it's truly unbelievable. 
Let's take a break before we get to our next topic, uh, a promotional break here. Report and opine on Instagram. Of course, yes, you're sir. climbing the ladder. And if you want to follow his backup one, so because you're going to get deleted soon, um, we, we can do <laughs> we can, we can. This is, oh, this yeah, is your old cool. school. So you're, you used to be sh showing people the garbage in New York City. Now you've got some mask propaganda stuff going. I like this too. This might end up being a book too, Eric. Dude, the, okay, the mask propaganda in Utah was through the roof, bro. It brought me back to New York. It really did. Like, that stuff's everywhere, man. Um, yeah, that's just Here you are on the moon. Me. This is the moon, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the chat's going to be like, I knew it. Thank God he knows. Um, and then we got my show who air that aired tonight, uh, Sam Sorbo. If you want to go to rebelnewsplus.com slash Andrew says, or you can just go to the shows. Um, I'm super cool. There's what I was talking about with Vince Dow there. And uh, I talked to Sam Sorbo. If you know who Kevin Sorbo is, he was TV's Hercules, everybody. Well, Sam Sorbo is an author and a podcaster. And she was actually the first person to have me on their show two years ago. She had me on her radio show. Very nice lady. A lot of red pills about education were dropped. Um, and she has a very good quote in there that I think you guys are going to like. She says, and I, I said, why do you think people are so against uh, taking their kids out of school? And they always complain it for the social aspects. And she goes, well, you send your students to Catholic school to become Catholic, to learn about Catholicism. Um, you send your kids to Hebrew school to learn Judaism. You send your kids to uh, a Muslim school to learn about Islam. You send your kid to government school to be taught, like, to be indoctrinated into the government. So I never heard anyone say that before. And it's a pretty damn good analogy when you think about it. And maybe you wouldn't think that 20 years ago. But now it's definitely pretty obvious. And the last thing, you guys, which I don't actually have up, is my Patreon, which I'm going to type in for you right now, patreon.com slash Andrew says, because I just updated it with some new levels. You can be the CNN <laughs> tier where <laughs> you provide me money and you don't get anything just like CNN. You can be an info <laughs> warrior with, where I'll give you a personalized message as Alex Jones, or you can become Joe Rogan. You want me? You want this particular podcast to become the size of Joe Rogan? You can see there's fancy Canadian dollars, much less in American. You type it in, it's American, and then all of a sudden it changes. I was like, oh, that's that's completely different. And there's also a hidden level of super fan of twenty seven dollars a month, just because you like me and want to give me money. So <laughs> join. Um, I'm gonna have to start rolling out. I do have behind the scenes content to put on there, which I've already started putting up. Exclusive content starts in the Alex Jones um, <laughs> tier. Eric, maybe I should uh, make an announcement here, or maybe I should wait. Um, but speaking with Alex Jones, let's just say I'm going to be on InfoWars in a couple weeks um, with Owen Schroyer. He's coming on my show. I'm going on his show. It's pretty exciting for me. Um, I Sometimes I wonder who I am. It's not that big of a deal, but it kind of is to me just because it's somebody I watched before. And I'm pretty excited about that. So in th two weeks' time, he's going to be on my show. Um, yeah, two weeks' time, he'll be on my show. So two Thursdays from now. And then on this following day, I'll be on The War Room with Owen Troyer, everybody. Bada bing, bada boom. Wow, that's the announcement right there. It is. I sort of just stumbled into that. So Awesome. Um... I'm pretty excited. Um, I haven't hadn't seen him until this interview with Barely Informed with a lot at CPAC the other day. And they talk about, we can just let this play in the background. What they talk about is how they talk about the capital and everything like that. And he says that he um, didn't know anything, any of that was going to happen. But w then what I was most interested to hear was to see if Elad asked him about the FBI informant stuff which had come out in an article, and this is him asking him about it. And all he says is, yes, I did work with the FBI in uh, giving up some, tra I think, human traffickers or drug smugglers. And he's like, and that's it. And that's it. There's nothing more to the story that I did help them, and that's it. Super sketchy to me. He says he, there was two chapters that had a problem with his previous work, but they've since come around, and now everything's back to normal in the Proud Boys. Um... My thinking, Eric, we talked about this before, was 
Uh, I think we pontificated whether or not anything was going to happen to him. I mean, we see other people, including Brandon Straka, walk away guy, getting indicted or allegedly charged or whatever's happening, getting in deep trouble. I mean, uh, Q Shaman guy was on 60 Minutes the other day from prison. Um, these people are getting in a lot of trouble. Enrique Terrio, all of a sudden, he's back on the streets and everything's normal, Eric. Uh, what's going on there? Look, I don't know. And this, and I think, <laughs> well, we, uh, yeah, like we talked about the, the informant stuff, and I still, I, I just don't care. Like, what, so what is he, <laughs> it, I mean, is this to say that he's going to rat out Proud Boys? Like, w what is the relevance in this? Okay, like, if he, if he truly did, Help. I mean, I don't trust the, the, the FBI as far as I can throw anybody. They, oh, they are course. obviously a tool, uh, the henchmen of the corrupt left, right? I mean, while, while Antifa burned down the entire... And again, the hypocrisy horse has been beaten to a paste, but while Antifa and BLM were burning down the whole country for months at a time, nobody cares until some people show up at the Capitol. But I get my point is... What does it matter? Is this to say that he's gonna bring down the Proud Boys? I don't. I truly don't believe the Proud Boys are into any big bad stuff. Like maybe they're into some stuff that I have no idea about. Maybe they all might be into, you know, drug smuggling or who knows what they're really doing. But I just didn't. I mean, it doesn't bother me if he was actually involved with bringing down some human traffickers or drug traffickers in Florida. Then so what? I, I just I. The thing that people say is that when groups like this pop up, and this is what people who know this to be a fact about other organizations, especially here in Canada, uh, that popped up, you might see them on some people's YouTube channels. And I'm not saying that about mine, but there's been popular YouTubers in Canada who have aligned themselves with groups not realizing that they were feds. Um, and that seems to be what is the, is the worry, is that these groups pop up and then they put feds in them or informants what do you ever want to call them and they use that to steer them in a direction which makes in this case if the proud boys look bad then it really makes republicans look bad for example when antifa looks bad or blm looks bad it, it's bad for communists and some people in the democrat party so that's the idea is that when when this sort of thing happens when there's let's say let's say he is working we don't know that for sure is then you have this opportunity where things like the Capitol happen and all of a sudden, well, we can blame the Proud Boys because so-and-so has been coerced into doing something and so-and-so. And of course, whether you want to admit it or not, when the Proud Boys do something bad, it's like a point against Trump or like hardcore Trump fans. It's like a point against them. I, 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 you don't I see that connection? I, it's a, oh, oh. It might not be that like that for you, but that's what it is for the general okay, Joe what, Schmo. What, what? Okay, so what have the Proud Boys done? That what? What are they? What have they done? Well, they Seriously, were certainly not, there at the Capitol. I'm not, um, I'm not talking about like oh they're they're white supremacists or like an angle. Like what? Oh, I don't believe do? that either. Um, they get in fights with Antifa for the best. My opinion is different from what I think the general public is, and there is something to be said for general public opinion when things are portrayed in a certain light on mainstream media. That definitely has an effect. Okay, so still, so if Tario was working, I mean, it sounds like he's admitted to working with the FBI, and if anything, that should almost make the Proud Boys look better. I'm, what am I missing here? If he's been no, working I don't with, think they want to. They okay. They don't want to be involved with the FBI. But if if he can actually help the crooked, corrupt FBI do something good, then I say more power to both of them. I, I, I'm out of the loop here. I'm not understanding the problem. I don't think he works for the FBI anymore. I would I would allege I would have the opinion. I shouldn't have said I allege. I have the opinion that he might be working for someone else that has an invested interest in making them look bad. That's what, I, if I was a member of the Proud Boys, which I never would be because I'm not a follower, hence why I have my own YouTube channel, <laughs> I would I would have a problem with that. I wouldn't want somebody who's giving tips on how to arrest me. I mean, there's two Proud Boys in New York that are in prison. Um, 
what from getting in a fight with Antifa. New York got exactly what they wanted from the Proud Boys in that situation. Okay, so so it's just the members of the Proud Boys who should be angry with Enrique for working with the feds. Because I'm still not understanding why, if this is true, if what he says is true about you know drug traffickers in Florida, if that is true, that to me seems like a step in the right direction for him and the Proud Boys. If he can say, you know, even you could even go as far to say, I, you know, he could be on some like six nine type of shit, right? Like, oh, I used to, <laughs> I used to work with these people, but now I turn my life around and I help the the feds. Pitch. Nobody wants to be around a snitch. Of course, of course. But the point I'm trying to make is, okay, fine. Some some angry Proud Boys who may not be happy with Enrique. Fine, get out of the gang. Or I'm sorry, not not the, it's not a gang. Oh, nice it's a terrorist group <laughs> in Canada. Um. Oh yeah, which is silly, but that's a whole nother no, a whole nother discussion. But there's your guy six uh, nine. <laughs> who, if it's just the members of the Proud Boys who are angry angry with Enrique, so what? I don't. I still maybe you could beat this through my thick skull. I am still not understanding how him working with the FBI makes the Proud Boys look bad on a public scale. I just, I'm not seeing it. Sounds like this is going to have to be a different show where we get like two other people in. Um, I mean, that could be, I think that's what we should do. We should get another episode about this and then we can have people, somebody who agrees with me and somebody who agrees with you. We unleash them, we sign off and let them do all of our work for us. <laughs> uh, speaking <laughs> of um, agreeing or disagreeing, I'm sure you've seen this uh, sort of like right wing infighting that's sort of been happening lately. I don't know if we still got between time, but, who um, Richard Grinnell and some of the, I guess, uh, gay conservatives and some of the more hardline uh, conservatives that are saying, is that Fuentes battling with those other people? Yeah. Fuentes is in there. Fuentes, Grinnell, um, another like Congresswoman or, or Senator. No, I think she's a Congresswoman. I forget her name. Um, and, I can genuinely see how both sides could have a point. Um, I'm not going to express my opinion on the issue at this particular point in time, but I can see where both sides are coming from. And right, they wanted they wanted to say basically no transgenders, and then yeah, I saw a little bit about this. Um, I do see both sides, but I just can't get on the side of Nick Fuentes because there's just. I just think he's uh, like just a kid who, I mean, he, I, I always point back to when he got bodied by Milo Yiannopoulos and Milo got him to admit that he's against like interracial marriage, which is crazy, interracial couples. Um, so I, I, I just see him as like a kid who hasn't fleshed out his all ideas yet. And I do disagree with a view like that. I think that's crazy. And I do disagree with like his immigration, but um but when people say, uh, like, I don't even know. I don't even know what this guy's stance is. Ren Rick Grinnell says gays aren't welcome in the Republican Party. Woman who told Rick Grinnell gays aren't welcome in the GOP gets some backup. Okay, so somebody else who told him. Um, gay conservatives aren't welcome. We'll check out his Twitter here. Okay, it doesn't want me to check out his Twitter there. Yeah, so basically, I mean, and, and I didn't I didn't read all the tweets or whatever, but... Basically, I, I believe what happened, like, right after CPAC, Grinnell tweeted something. Uh, he, he tweeted or posted to Instagram or something um, some support from a transgender Trump supporter. Oh, what's that? Um, Incredibly accepting and wonderful experience for this transgender yeah. Republican woman. I worked the log cabin Republican booth and received yeah. nothing but respectful. I think the problem that people who would identify as Republican would have with that is that we're now just uh, going along with the, the fantasy uh, from which this person lives in. And that's not to, to harp on them or rip on them. It's just that it, it's at some point we have to admit what it is and it's not just, Hey, Hey, I'm a woman now. Like it's just not how it works. So that I can no. see that argument without agreeing with the people. I can I can see that argument for sure. Is that what you're getting at? Well, here's my thing: is that basically, is that 
when you when you can effectively convince somebody or convince an entire population basically that just because you think you like if i just say okay now my name is erica and i'm a woman and people are more ready to believe that than if i say i'm healthy and i don't want to wear a mask think about that that's the first thing <laughs> right that is that is that not true though right i mean i could say hey i you know i identify as erica i'm a woman now everybody would you know jump up and down and praise that as being very brave but if i say uh i'm gonna go downstairs of this hotel and gamble away the rest of my money without a mask on that would not be acceptable all right that's the first thing so that doesn't make sense and that's obviously you know very um with, with like the the moment here but even before the virus even before the virus my thing with the the, the transgender stuff is that it's it again at the risk of sounding insensitive bear with me it is a little <laughs> bit scary so right if somebody wants to call me transphobic fine i do have a little bit of a fear and i'll tell you why maybe i mentioned this before is that if you can convince an entire population of people that a man can magically become a woman because he thinks it you now have complete control that is the most basic biological fact man woman child family that's that's the same here canada you know ethiopia brazil it's the same everywhere that's the only way that we as people even exist but if you can convince somebody that it's not real you now have complete control right you can convince them of anything and that's kind of scary well, let's uh show before we go what they were saying so lauren witzke who i just opened is she's a congresswoman is hold, that correct, or? hold the line cpac uh or wait what did i just read there hold the line pack official twitter account for so a group of people who give a bunch of money to republicans is basically how we can spokeswoman at this so i'm the spokeswoman for a group that gives republicans money is right. what we can basically boil it down to. We're celebrating mental illness now, she says. No, we're celebrating that God made everyone and people being respectful. Try it. Uh, that's kind of a cop-out if you ask me. Yeah, totally. And, and then she says, transgenderism is demonic. Okay, she's getting Pat Robertson on us. No matter how much dollars your donors give you to convince you it isn't, is CPAC going to start advocating for chemical castrations for Myers next year? Because that's what's coming. Uh, why do people have to act like this in politics? And he says, are you okay with welcoming gay conservatives into the Republic, Republican Party? And she says, what you really mean is, will I sell out traditional marriage to appease the population, whoever... Uh, I'm going to have to side with this guy on this one, Eric. I don't know about you. Is there anything else? It, look, He's it, a, she could have said no or yes, and she's like, what you really mean is this. And the answer is no. Okay, so she just says welcoming. No, she's not willing to welcome gays into the conservative party. I'm going to have to disagree with that one, Eric. Um, gay and transgenderism is not the same at all. 100%. Um, so and, Lauren Witzke loses, in my opinion, here. I guess, I guess th this all came up because when we were talking about Enrique and you may maybe thought, oh, we should... You know what? I've been on the road. I forgot. We should have got Leonardo. Maybe I don't know. Maybe this is Caprio. No, Leonardo from from the Bronx, the comedian. Um, shout out to her. But I was just that that came to mind when you mentioned that we could get somebody else to weigh in on the Enrique FBI thing, and then that's what came to mind. Is like maybe we could get somebody else to weigh in because I can see. I can see both sides of the argument, right? Like a lot of people go with this slippery slope thing and you are 100% correct. Being gay and being transgender are two completely, totally different things. And I tend to just not want communism. That's what I want. I don't want to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, so that's where I stand on it. But I guess yeah, that's probably for anybody who, a cop out as well. No, for anybody who cares about my opinion about that and i doubt that you do or why else would you i don't know but like i don't care people can do whatever they want i don't agree with giving children hormones and i don't agree with i don't know uh men being in women's sports i don't i definitely don't agree with those two things but if you're a 26 year old dude 
who wants to become a 26 year old woman, then go for it, dude. Just don't, but that could open up a whole nother argument of whether or not healthcare should pay for that um, in a socialist sense, which I don't think it should, but it is where I live because I live in a certain part of the world that likes things like that. We've got a super chat from atomic dog. He's a guy I recognize from Twitter. Um, Boston Bruins fans. The Bruins are the best hockey team of all time. Who doesn't love Rask? I do love Rask. Pasternak scores a lot on the Leafs, and Marchand is scum. Also, hey, Rebel News, Andrew Chapdos is the best number one. Well, they're not watching. Maybe one person from there is watching, but uh, thank you. Um, no, the Leafs are the best team in the league this year. They're probably going to win the Cup, and it's not going to count in my eyes if they do because they've got this whole COVID conferences where only Canadian teams play each other, and they're going by region. So I have this great fear that they're going to win this year for the first time in like 60 years. And I'm not going to believe it in my heart, Eric. Last yeah, words? I, no, I <laughs> I don't want to talk about I didn't even realize the All-Star game. I don't care about sports. These people, I barely cared about sports to begin with. And now this COVID, and they, they, they are a huge part of this problem. Let me say that as my last bit is that these NBA teams, I don't know too much about hockey, the NHL, but uh, NFL, NBA, MLB, they are a huge part of this problem. They are no different from Hollywood in my eyes. you got these guys sitting on the sidelines wearing masks, and they're going from their cars to the locker room with a mask. Yeah. These guys are seven feet tall. They're in perfect health, and they're walking around in a mask <laughs> because it's all propaganda. Um, I left my book on the other side of the room. I have to plug that every single time. Go and get I know- it. <laughs> we'll get it. I'll just say that uh, hockey started with the BLM stuff in the beginning last year. They kind of got off it, but they're still doing weird mask stuff. They were doing a ceremony for one of the best players in the league, Sidney Crosby, and everybody was wearing masks on the ice as if they're not tested all the time and in their own little bubble. So it doesn't make any sense. Throw that book up again. And when is it available? Okay, so I, I, I keep pushing it back like it's, like it's a mixtape. But I, I showed you some of the details that we had to change. And the only reason um, that I don't have my second proof yet is because I'm on the road right now. So as soon as I get back home to South Dakota, um, so if today is March 4th, um, I don't have a hard date. I will let you know as soon as I have a hard date. But, dude, I, you look, I put a lot of time and effort to, into this. And it is coming soon. Give me about a month so this time in april early april is my is is um is what we're looking like and if you don't want to look at the book it's thick enough to beat somebody with and with that <laughs> we'll we'll see you guys again next week awesome later play us out band